Hello everybody, welcome back to the video, and today, to celebrate my 20th birthday, we're going to be looking at my top 20 favorite movies of all time. Now, I want to emphasize, these are my personal favorites. Now, there's some really good movies that are these classics that people really love, that I think are pretty good as well, that honestly are not on the list because I genuinely prefer other movies. For example, Casablanca. Really good movie, not on the list. Even hotter one for not being on the list, The Godfather. I think it's a great movie, don't get me wrong, but these are personal favorites or ones that I have fond memories with. And while The Godfather is a really good movie, you know, if I was given the option of any of the 20 on this list or The Godfather, I'd pick any of the 20 on this list. But The Godfather, I'd say is like 21st, 22nd. Barely not on the list, but still. Okay, so, 20th, Jumanji, star, which starred with Robin Williams. I love this movie. This movie is just a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people talk about the one with The Rock and Kevin Hart, and yeah, that movie's good, but I just think that genuinely this movie is so much funnier. Robin Williams is absolutely fantastic in this movie, and... I mean, it's just a great movie as well. And if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out. So, yeah, uh, 19th is Sherlock Holmes. This is the first of the two Robert Downey Jr. movies, and this movie has a really strong case in it. Basically, Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes stops uh, Lord Blackwood, the movie's villain, who uses dark magic. And, you know, arrests him and, you know, Blackwood's executed. And then it comes back to life. And so Sherlock Holmes has to figure out how he came back to life and what the plan is and how to stop Blackwood. It's a really good case as well. Uh, Danny Jr. is, I honestly think, my favorite Sherlock Holmes just because I love his performance in the role. He's just really good. I've seen some great Holmes performances. You know, Cumberbatch is really good. Uh, watching Elementary with uh, Johnny Lee Miller, that's pretty interesting. And obviously there's the great Tom Baker in The Hound of the Baskervilles. But Danny Jr. is my personal favorite. So, yeah, really good movie. And it's just a really genius explanation of how the case is resolved as well. It's just a great movie. Okay, seven, sorry, 18th is Avengers Endgame. Now, I had a hard time picking where Endgame was going to go on the list because I do think the stuff with that calls back to Thor The Dark World maybe drags on a little bit too long. Um, also... Um, yeah, but actually that's pretty much my main issue of the movie. I really like the rest of the movie. It acts as a great conclusion to the Infinity Saga, and I think provides the best performance that Robert Downey Jr. has in the MCU, apart from, I'd say, the first Iron Man, but even then I think this might be slightly better. Um, the ending of this movie is absolutely incredible. And I can kind of understand the argument as to, you know, this being the end of the Infinity, not the Infinity Saga, sorry, it was the end of that, but the end of the MCU. But at the same time, then we wouldn't have gotten stuff like No Way Home and Guardians 3. So the movie is really good. And I honestly really love it. But I do think that the stuff calling back to Thor The Dark World drags on for a little bit too long. But, you know, it does work as the end of the Infinity Saga. So, and that's kind of insane that this movie does work as the culmination of about 11 years of stories. So, yeah, really good. 17, Dead Man's Chest. Okay, so I actually reviewed this movie uh, last year. It's really good. Um... 
Johnny Depp is Pirates of the Caribbean. And so if they make a new one without Johnny Depp, then as many people on the internet have said, no Johnny, no Wachi. <laughs> but back to Dead Man's Chest, wanting to point out something funny some people have said. Seriously, I don't know how many people have said that. It's a lot. But Dead Man's Chest is a really good movie. Johnny Depp delivers what I think might be his best performance as Jack Sparrow. The action sequences are incredible, especially the three-way sword fight between Jack Sparrow, Norrington, and Will Turner for the key to the titular chest. And it, I think this movie has the best supporting cast of any of the Pirates movies. It's just a lot of fun, and I would say easily the best one of them, and just one of my personal favorite movies. Number 16, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, I really do like Indiana Jones, the movies. I honestly, even the weaker ones I like. And yeah, I really like Raiders of the Lost Ark. A lot of people make the argument that basically the same thing happens, except maybe quicker if Indy doesn't get involved in the movie. But, um... Regardless, you can debate that in the comments. But here's the thing, is... This movie is still great. It's still incredible. All of the performances, even by the supporting cast, are great. The obvious highlight being Harrison Ford. And uh, here's a hot take for you. One thing you're going to notice, and this might, might upset some people, no Star Wars. The only one I was really in contention about putting on the list was um, was probably Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back. But ultimately, I honestly would rather watch Indiana Jones than Han Solo. I know that's probably a hot take, but this is my opinion. But yeah, Harrison Ford kills it in this movie. He really does. It's not his best performance as Indiana Jones. I'm going to get to that later because this isn't the only Indiana Jones movie on the list. Okay, number 15 is Clue. This movie is a lot of fun. So, if you ever... Basically, Clue is a movie inspired by a board game. Because there's a board game called Clue. It's basically a murder mystery game. Everyone has different players that they play as. So, and you're trying to figure out who was the killer. It's pretty fun. The movie is a murder mystery movie, but it's a comedy as well. It's really funny. And if you have the option, locate physical media for this movie. Because, without going into too many spoilers, this movie actually has three endings. If you watch on streaming, it's just going to play all three of the endings back to back to back. If you play it with the option to, if you get it on DVD, you still get that as an option, but you also get the option to generate a random ending. So, yeah, I'd recommend doing that. It's really fun as well. And honestly, the way that the movie goes, any of the endings could be the true ending. It's a really fun movie, and it's got some great, it's got some great humor. I'd say Christopher Lloyd is probably my favorite part of this movie. He's just really good. So, yeah. The whole movie is great. I'd highly recommend it. And who knows? If you guys want it, there's a rumored remake of the movie starring Ryan Reynolds. If you guys want me to, let, let me know and I'll do a comparison video on the two. If you guys want that, let me know. 14th, Groundhog Day. Have you guys ever watched this movie? This is a great movie. This is, in my opinion, the best Bill Murray movie. Basically, he plays a reporter who gets stuck in a time loop. He has to live the same day over and over and over again. Groundhog Day. And it's a really fun movie. I really like it. I usually try to watch it every year. It's one of my favorites, obviously. It's just a really fun movie. Seriously, just go watch it. I really do like this movie. It's really funny. And... I honestly think that this might be the funniest Bill Murray movie, along with being his best. I like Scrooged as well, but ultimately I think this is a better movie. 13th is On Her Majesty's Secret Service. So, 
I knew I was going to have some Bond on here. This isn't the only Bond movie. We're going to get to the other one in a little bit. But, you know, I didn't want it to be a lot of Bond movies. And I had several in the running um, for the list. I'll tell you one of the other ones in a little bit that didn't make the cut. But I really was ultimately torn. Really, I didn't want it to be 60s Overload. There's four that honestly really could have made the list. But I ultimately went with Majesties over something like From Russia with Love. I love From Russia with Love. I really do. And that, I'd say, is probably 21st place. But I ultimately went with Majesties because it's just a really good movie. Uh, you've got the best of the Bond girls with Diana Rigg as Tracy. You've got the best Blofeld with Telly Savalas. I would argue that this is one of the best supporting casts as well. The ending is incredible. And obviously, uh, Lazenby, I think if he had gotten another movie or two, he probably would have been more fondly remembered as Bond. Because my understanding is he declined to do a second movie. So... But, that being said, I think he works in this movie. I think he does. And particularly when he's on alongside Diana Rigg. But, that being said, I do prefer a few other movies. So, 12th is Furious 7. So, look. Yeah, Fast and Furious 7. Now, I love this movie. I really do. My complaints are minimal. Actually, none. Non-existent. Jason Statham is one of the best. He plays one of the best villains in the series, honestly, in my opinion. He does get redemption in the next movie. So, yeah. But he plays, honestly, maybe the biggest threat they ever faced until uh, Jason Momoa in Fast X. With Momoa's character of Dante. Uh, but, regardless, I'm talking about Furious 7. And Jason Statham is just incredible. Right? The, the whole cast is great as well. And, of course, you really can't discuss Furious 7 without discussing the sad side of the production, which was the death of Paul Walker. And... I think that they really did handle this the best way they could. They Now, I know there's a lot of controversy around using CGI to replace an actor who had passed away. But I think this movie, my take on that, to make it quick, is that you need to do what this movie does, which is to get the approval of the family. You know, I think that if the family approves of it and it's done tastefully, I think I think it's okay. And this movie handles the CGI of Paul Walker incredibly, and I love the ending as well. And also, can I just say, I mainly prefer older music, but See You Again is, I think, one of the best songs of the 2010s. It's really good. So, yeah, Furious 7 is a very good movie. Okay, number 11, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. You know, typically, you know, everyone thinks something's going to happen. And I will admit, I was along the line that Rocket was probably going to die in the movie along with Drax. So, I was actually really surprised when all of the Guardians made it out of this movie alive. And I do think that this is the best Guardians movie. It's a very good movie. The High Evolutionary is... One of the best MCU villains, in my opinion. Just an incredible performance as well. Um, but, ultimately, you know, also something that really kind of helped this movie, in my opinion, was actually, ironically, watching a very bad Marvel movie, at least uh, not long after it, The Marvels. Because watching that made me think, oh, well, this is actually much better than I thought it was. Because seriously, it's how do you go from such a high point to your lowest point in a long time? But Guardians 3, even without being sandwiched in between, 
to between a not very good movie and one of the worst is still really good and it would have been the bright spot easily of last year even if those other two movies were better and uh what is the legendary star lord going to be kind of gets teased in there it's a great movie I think it's the best Guardians movie, and it's honestly the best MCU movie, in my opinion. But it's not the best Marvel movie. We're going to get to that later. Tenth place. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Wow, the tonal shift is just... <laughs> because, seriously, you go from Guardians, which is a great ending, very sad, to one of to one of the funniest movies ever made, in my opinion. I really stinking love this movie. This is one I always watch every year. You know, I think this is I think this is my grandma's favorite movie of all time, to be honest. It's such a great movie. Chevy Chase is absolutely incredible in this movie. The whole cast, honestly, is great. Um, yeah, I just love this movie. It, it's just a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it. Okay, ninth place, GoldenEye. I mean, the best Bond movie had to be one of Brosnan's, right? I, I really love GoldenEye. It's a great movie. Best, you know, if you did not tell someone that this was Brosnan's first movie, you know, they would say, oh, he's probably been in the role for a couple of movies. A movie or two at this point. You, you know, he's just, he slips into the role of Bond perfectly. Um, you also get one of the best Bond villains in Alec Trevelyan. And you also get a really good theme song as well with Tina Turner's Golden Eye. The movie itself is just incredible. I really love this movie. And also introduces, uh, Maybe the best M in the series. Judy Dench is absolutely incredible. And I'll be honest here, I really was about this close from putting uh, her farewell movie, Skyfall, on the list. It almost made the list. I, again, had to make some tough calls. But Goldeneye, very strong movie, and the best Bond movie. Number eight is Elf. Now, I did review Elf. So if you want to go check that out, you can. Will Ferrell is really good. The, the movie is just a great movie. And honestly, a movie that, again, I watch every year at Christmas time. It's just a really funny movie as well. And, you know, also pretty funny is the behind-the-scenes story of this movie getting made. It's really good. I just love this movie. It's incredible. Number seven. John Wick Chapter 4. Okay. The John Wick series is incredible as a whole. But Chapter 4 is my favorite movie of the series. I think that each movie gets better. And this is a great movie. I don't want to go into too much in terms of spoilers for the movie. But uh, I really love the action sequences of this one. And particularly, it has a very shocking opening. Um, the movie is just incredible. And the final duel is really interesting as well. So, yeah, really great movie. Uh, my only issue is, I know it was kind of a meme, I understand, I think, but John Wick falling down the stairs, it just feels like they were trying to you know, trying to boost the runtime. But that that's literally my only issue with this movie. You know, some people in my family said, this movie's almost three hours long? Good grief, that's a long John Wick movie. I loved every second of this movie, except for John Wick falling down the stairs because that just felt repetitive and trying to boost the runtime. But regardless, I think this is Keanu Reeves' best performance. So what, he doesn't even say 300 words. I think that's the count someone said look this dude barely talks Keanu Reeves is incredible in this movie I think this is the best directed movie in the series as well it's just a great movie in general 
and one of my favorites in of all time and the best John Wick movie easily. Sixth place is Logan. Now, if you watched my X-Men ranking that I did a long time ago, near the start of the channel, then you know this was the hub. Yeah, this is the best Marvel movie, in my opinion. And I, I was kind of going back and forth. Is this in the top five? It's a great movie. And a great send-off for Hugh Jackman, who is returning for Deadpool and Wolverine, but still, um, this is a great movie. Hugh Jackman, oh man, I talked, or I legitimately think that Hugh Jackman should have gotten, the Oscars I think are horrific, Jackman should have gotten Best Actor for this movie. Seriously, leave, leave a like if you agree with that statement that Hugh Jackman should have gotten Best Actor for Logan. While you're doing that, subscribe as well. But, still great performance. The movie honestly should have it should have swept the Oscars as well. This movie is incredible. And I think it's easily the best of the X-Men movie and the best Marvel movie obviously. Okay. So fifth place, it's Scream. I mean I've talked about the Scream franchise a lot on this channel. So it really shouldn't surprise you that I was going to have one on my list. And I also have the poster for the most recent one uh, back here. But the first one is my personal favorite. Whether it be the fantastic performance of Nev Campbell. And honestly, the whole cast. This is the best cast of any of the Scream movies. And, I mean, obviously, Matthew Lillard who plays Stu, is one of my favorite characters in the franchise. The whole movie is incredible, right? There's some movies that, particularly horror movies, I've seen a few of them, there, there's points where I'm thinking, why do we need this in the movie? Everything in this movie adds to the plot, adds to character development, and adds to excitement. And, unlike Halloween, which I watched and actually was not a big fan of that first Halloween. I said, you know, that movie, everyone's dumb. This is smart people. That's why I like the Scream movies, because the characters know this stuff. Because they're not stupid. But yeah, Scream is just an incredible movie. And honestly, I think some of you guys might be shocked it isn't number one with the amount of times I've talked about this franchise on the channel. Fourth place, Back to the Future. I love this movie. In fact, when I got my new copy of the franchise for Christmas last year, yeah, that, I said new copy because I wore out the DVDs of the original time I had this set. Not this particular set, but I had all the movies, and I just essentially wore those DVDs out and needed new copies. I love Back to the Future. It is a great movie, and I think it's one of those movies that everyone should watch at some point in their lives. Please don't remake this one, Hollywood. Please don't. But this movie is incredible. Uh, the performances are incredible. The writing is really funny. There's great suspense as well, particularly with the clock tower sequence. Honestly, uh, my only complaint with the movie would be uh, Marty McFly singing Johnny B. Good isn't as good as Chuck Berry singing it. That That's really it, because... Chuck Berry did a great job with the original song, and I get why it's in this movie, but the original song is just much better. So, yeah, great movie. Also has some great original songs as well. Back in Time, I think it's pretty underrated. No one really talks about it, because everyone talks about The Power of Love, which is another great song. So, Back to the Future is, yeah, it's easily in the list. Now, I'm going to say this. Actually, with the top... Five, really? Any of these could change. Right? Any of these could change on a given day. 
they could change tomorrow to where it's all completely different. I love all five of these top movies. I think they're all great, but this is the order I'm placing them in today. Third place, Die Hard. The greatest Christmas movie ever made. And with that, a debate will definitely start in the comments. I have gotten into some de debates with people, and my easy answer for this is, have you actually watched Die Hard? The movie is a Christmas movie. And I would actually argue, and this might be a hot take, it's more Christmassy than It's a Wonderful Life. I mean, for starters, the whole movie is set at Christmas compared to It's a Wonderful Life, where it's like the last 30, 40 minutes of that movie. But Bruce Willis is incredible in this movie, and so is Alan Rickman as well. The whole cast is great, and this is a movie where you have an equally great hero and an equally great villain. And honestly, yeah, it's just a great movie, and I mean, obviously, I had to put it on the list. I love this movie. Okay, I had the hardest time picking the top two. Because literally, I actually had this list written a few days ago, except for the top two, which I knew were what they were going to be. But literally, I made the decision five minutes before starting this video. That's when I decided, okay, this is the order. So the runner-up, is Toy Story 2. So, why Toy Story 2? Well, I love the Toy Story movies. The four Toy Story movies are absolutely incredible. And, yeah, I said four. I, I legitimately have no interest in watching Lightyear. But the, to the second one is just a movie that I've always loved. It really is. It's a great movie. And... Legitimately, I have no complaints with the movie. I just, and honestly, yeah, like I said, it when I'm talking, you know, when I'm thinking of my favorite movies, it really switches between this one and number one. So, yeah. but what is number one? Well, if you paid attention, you might notice earlier that I said something and that hasn't happened yet. I said that I had another Indiana Jones movie. Well, number one is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I love this movie. This is my favorite of the Indiana Jones movies, and it really has been for a long time. So, for starters, the plot is much stronger in, than in Raiders. Right? Indy getting involved in the movie literally affects everything. And while I would say this is Harrison Ford's best performance as Indy. Uh, let, let's be honest here. Everyone knows what the real highlight of this movie is, and that's Sean Connery. Yeah, if you don't know, Sean Connery of James Bond fame played Indiana Jones' dad. And played single-handedly maybe my favorite character in the series. Sean Connery as Indiana Jones' dad legitimately playing Henry Jones Sr. might be my favorite casting of all time. That is incredible casting. And honestly, I really haven't been able to find another movie which stars Sean Connery and Harrison Ford. It, man, these two are great on screen together. They are really funny. In addition to that, you also have a really great supporting cast as well and Sala who I think is actually, I think he's actually better in this movie than in Raiders. I think he's funnier in this movie than in Raiders. And I really like the final sequences, that final scene of traps that Indy has to go through to get to the Holy Grail. You know, the actual Holy Grail. It's an incredible sequence, and I'd say it's one of my favorite sequences in the franchise's history. Um, the movie is great on several levels, and I think features incredible performances. Obviously, I've stated that, but, I mean, seriously. Also, I think this is the best-looking Indiana Jones movie. And, also, in addition to that, honestly... Look, I'm glad they made a couple other ones because I love this franchise. 
and I actually don't hate any of the movies, but this would have been a good ending for the series, but I'm still glad that they made more because, you know, even if the movie isn't great, you know, I I will never get tired of seeing Harrison Ford play, play Indiana Jones. And this movie is my personal favorite. It It's a great movie with a great story. John Williams always gives a great score, and I would say this might even be better than his Raiders score. The opening is incredible as well. Flashing back to young Indiana Jones. It's a great movie on so many levels, and I think it's the best Indiana Jones movie and my favorite movie of all time. But if you want to hear me talk about more recent movies that I love, I did a video covering every single movie I watched every year that I've been alive. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.